welcome to the Super License F1 podcast. My name's Rodney. My name is Zach. It's you two busy boys who have been busy, busy, busy watching F1, and now we're going to do some talking about it. I feel like this is turning into a, a full-time job, Rod. Watching F1, yeah. talking about it, dream scenario. Who's going to be the boss, and who's the worker? Oh, I mean, I feel like you're the boss, and I'm the worker, but at some point I might seize the means of production, but it's difficult because it's hard to like seize the internet from someone. <laughs> is it though? <laughs> I don't know. I guess yes and no is the answer to that. Yeah. It's, it's a complex a situation. Look, I don't understand the internet, but I also understand it intensely is what I'm trying to get at. Mm. Um, yeah, Zach, I mean, it's, it's, it's been, it's been a long, it feels like it's been a long season. I feel very tired. I know everyone's had like this experience of time just changing over the last year and a half where they're like, you know, the last month, it feels like five years. Yeah. But it feels like we've been doing a lot of Formula One talking and we've been doing dare to swear. We've been talking about races. There have been 50 million races every year. So we've got one to do, which is the British Grand Prix. But then, Zach, you are going to go and explore the world, take advantage of your double vax status and go mm. and have a hot vax summer somewhere. And <laughs> next week, we're going to have one week off. We've granted ourselves one week off. How many shows did we work out we've done? I think it's 19 weeks in a 19 row. 19 in a row. Ooh, yeah. That's um, that's more than we've done in some whole years. Yeah. And what the listeners don't know is it takes about oh, what we probably talked for about five hours and then we cut it down to that 55, 45 to 55 yeah, really bits. good minutes. Yeah. They're just the highlights. You guys just see the highlights. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, if true. you want to call it highlights, that sounds like a highfalutin <laughs> word for what, what this is. But anyway. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the point is that we've, re- we've really committed ourselves to doing lots of content and we've hit a, hit a point where it's like, well, we've done lots and not that we want to stop, but we just need one little week off rather than yep. going on a holiday. And I mean, look, I mean, you can imagine, listen, is going on a holiday, how much you would tr- cherish that right now. Imagine having to stop it and do, you know, something where you've got to take special equipment, put some thought into it, not be drunk. I mean, why would you want to do that with your life? So just, we're letting Zach, we're, we're all giving Zach the gift of an extra couple of hours on his hotel, his, uh, his, uh, his holiday. Couldn't think of the mm. word. I'm like, hospital, hotel? No, none of those words. You haven't had a holiday in giving, so long, you can't remember the name of holiday. <laughs> all I can think of is like quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Sit here all day long with all these messages going into my head about all this bad stuff. Anyway, we're giving Zach the we're all giving Zach the gift of a couple of extra hours on his holiday and to not have to take a mic by not doing a show next week. So we wanted to just be up front and just say that. Yep, I really appreciate it. Um we'll be back fighting Fury yes. uh with whatever yeah. the next race <laughs> after that is. That's true. Um which will be hungry. The Magushka Ooh. thingy race. Um oh, hi. which will be Mad yeah. Mad Mad Judich, is it that one? Yeah, I, it's yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's another it's another Styrian slash Steg or Mark uh, situation where multiple names, as if everyone's not confusing enough. Um, Zach, before we get into the race talk this week, another thing that's maybe confusing or maybe not is that we had F one's first question mark sprint qualifying race, and we're gonna gonna offer some opinions about it, the hot takes about it, the good, the bad, the ugly, and. Uh, then we're going to get into the race talk. This is a thing that we can't put in the race talk proper because not every race this season is going to have one of these. So we thought we'd just put it right up front. <laughs> First of all, I happen to know that you were a big fan and that you loved you loved all about it. You wanted to marry it. So tell us how you felt watching the sprint race. <laughs> really nailed my uh, my flag to the, to the <laughs> mast. Is that what they say? Yeah. Uh, my colors to well, the mast, wrong? which is flag. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe I should get a Twitter account that you don't follow. Um, so that you <laughs> don't know my get feelings. Actually, you know what you have to do? I was looking at the Twitter feed the next day and it was like one tweet from our account, one tweet from your account, one tweet from our account. <laughs> Pick a fucking lane, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is a little bit like that. Sometimes, like the hottest takes I save for my own personal account because I don't want I don't I don't want you to turn on the super license account. You know, twelve hours later and be like, Zach said what? No, I wouldn't do that. Oh no, no, that just happens to me when I wake up and I've got twelve notifications on super license. I'm like, what did Rod don't do? Don't even worry about that. Don't even worry about that. <laughs> what, what did Rod do? It could be someone else. Yeah, it could maybe be someone we else. Um, anyway. Yeah, mate, exactly. Uh, what did I think of the sprint race? I yes. just like, look, the reason it was so good is because no one had to worry about anything. They could, like, <laughs> they worried about the normal stuff, but the drivers got to drive as fast as they could for 17 laps. They were like, I, the tires will last. 
I just need to get like, and there's a very clear goal for everyone. Like there's no point, like if you're 14th, there's no point in being like, uh, well, just bring the car home. It's like, no, go and overtake people, drive, drive as fast as you can. And it creates like situations with like Fernando Alonso. It created, you know, dynamic fighting at the front because, you know, Lewis was, was just really, you know, really wanted to make sure he could have a really, fi- a really good fighting chance. And yes, we got some stale laps towards the end because the front runner was like, well, you know what? It's going to make sure that I'm on the grid tomorrow. But the racing was immense. I didn't, I liked that it was just like a lack of complication. And all I can imagine is for the, and I'm going to dub the, the, you know, the drive to survive generation of Formula One watchers and welcome to all of them. This, I think, would have been really good for people who are new to the sport to be like, that's what it's all about. Driving really fast, nothing else complicated. Don't have to worry about tires or pit stops or any of that junk. Just see people battling and it kind of artificially creates a, a nice packed field where everybody's battling. I thought it was re- as a spectacle, terrific. Yeah. I think it's a good primer. If you're settling in on a Saturday and you happen to catch it, it's so, like you say, it's uncomplicated. So, it creates some familiarity so that when Sunday comes around, you're like, I've seen this before. I know what's going to happen. Um, and then, you know, it hits you with the, the strategies and the, and the hmm. weird radio messages and the, why is this happening? Why is there a safety car? What, the, what even is that? etc. I think there are lots of, um, I, I, I've come away with pros and cons. I think number one, it was a good thing that we had some position changes because legitimately there's a real chance that we could have just started and finished all in the same order and gone well that was a big old fucking waste of time i'm sure that some sprint races will be a bit closer to that but um i think it was good that we had number one a fight at the front with the switching of the leads i think that actually set up uh the situation at the start of the race proper but we'll get to that i think also uh, with perez tumbling down i predicted this we said that some that one of the front runners would be affected and i you know i was hoping it was going to be a little more spicy than perez but still a driver from one of the top two teams the team the team that's leading the championship in the constructors uh was grossly affected by their result and a few other little changes here and there but i mean the good thing is that we it's a great candidate for looking at it and examining it and deciding what we think about it um because if we'd had a real dud there might have been a bit more backlash and we might not have actually seen the potential that this has. So I thought it was a good uh, case for what this sort of could be. I think it was way too long. I think 10 minutes max, uh, 10 laps Ooh. max. Any more than 10 is a waste of time, in my opinion. It's difficult to react. That Yeah. Re- <laughs> it's asking me to react. Um, I think 10 might be short. I think yep. maybe it's a time. I agree. Thing. <laughs> and I think that would be good. Yeah. I mean, it's meant to be a sprint, right? Um, that's They've fair tried enough. to make that's it true. half an hour. I think that's the idea. Yeah. They've started yeah. from half an hour and then worked back. And I think that's actually the problem. That's my problem with it. And I mean, 17 mm. laps of a race, especially Silverstone, like that mm. is a short, that's a, that is a soft tire stint. And we know mm. with the drivers, the way they drive, they're like, well, I'm going to drive fastest across these 17 laps if I can serve a bit. So I just feel that incentivizing them to push even harder than they did would be a good thing. The other thing I would say, and someone said, I think it might have been, hmm, maybe it was even Max who was like, I took pole, but boy, feels weird to take pole from a sprint race. Just doesn't seem quite kosher. I think the whole thing has to be rethought because why have the standard Q1, Q2, Q3 on Friday to set the order for this sprint race on the Saturday. On the, on the Saturday. It just seems it seems unnecessary to do that. And I've been trying to work out what to do. So listen, li- listen, listen to this and you tell me what you think. Okay. Friday, practice one, practice two, as we used to have. Saturday morning. Did you remember the one lap qualifying we used to do like 15 do. years yeah. ago or something? Yep. Yep. I was why a not babe. do? Yeah. Why not do one lap qualifying in the morning on Saturday to set the order for a 10 lap sprint race Saturday afternoon? The reason being sprint, like the, the, one of the arguments against one lap qualifying was always like, well, one driver might drive into a lap and then 15 minutes later it starts raining and the, that driver gets grossly penalized and has to, you know, doesn't get the, doesn't get the fair the fair uh, track conditions. And it's like, yeah, of course, that's what made that sort of interesting. But also, if that leads into a sprint race, 
then that driver is misplaced in the grid. But hey, imagine the action that we're going to get when they start to make amends and fight back through the grid. So I just feel like those two in tandem is a good mix. It's a good balance of kind of everything. Yeah, I can say that. I can say that. I think that there is a... What would I... How would I term this? Because I have my, I think I have my reasons or my thinking on why it is this way. Um, I think that they needed something exciting on Fridays so people don't go on Friday. Have you ever been to a Grand Prix on a Friday? I don't think I have. I mean, I have. I don't know if I have. You definitely... Um, I've been to one on Friday with you. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe that one time. Uh, <laughs> okay, that one time. But, I've, I've been to a couple of... Thursdays and Fridays, but that's more like, well, I've got nothing to do and it's yeah. on, so I may as well go. Yeah. I think, though, um, the main thing is they wanted to improve qualifying, um, mm-hmm. but I guess they were like, well, how do we set the order for this sprint race? I guess we just don't want to necessarily get rid of qualifying. I mean, the the obvious question is, well, why not just do the other session Saturday morning? Because I, yeah. I just feel like it loses the momentum to have practice qualifying, practice qualifying. I just don't get that. Yeah. I sp- yeah, I, I really, I really do think that it is a spice up a Friday thing. Give something interesting on Friday. I agree with you. I think the qualifying format, then if you're going to have a sprint race, could should be changed. I don't think you need the jeopardy of the knockout qualifying because that's all there to make the product more interesting, but also to kind of clear the track for the top ten to put in really fast times and to really compete in a clear way. That's all kind of bullshit too, because it just they artificially increase the density anyway. Because everybody does two laps, everybody finishes right at the end. You still have the blocking problems. Yeah. You still have all the stuff that prevents good times, and you yeah. still have an evolving track. Um, you also have a very evolving track this week on the weekends. You do sprint races and stuff because you don't have as much practice happening, so yeah, there's right. not as much rubber on the track. Um, so we saw it in qualifying. I'd totally forgotten that qualifying was on Friday and I finished work. I'd gone like for a run yeah. come home, and, <laughs> and, and like, then I would check my, check my phone and, like, and I was like, oh shit, there's qualifying on right now. So I like set up mm. my iPad to put it in the shower, while, not in the shower, but in the bathroom while I was in the shower. I was like, I'm watching qualifying on a Friday night. This is kind of cool. <laughs> this? But then I was like, but this is kind of nothing because mm. it's not. It means nothing because it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Yeah, That's what exactly. I mean. I think I don't, I don't think the two work in the same weekend format. The other thing I would say is that, you know, I've been a bit of a defender of the old, of the, what, I don't know what you even call it, the current qualifying model, the, the Q1, Q2, Q3 model, what I think it does well, what I think it does really well is build to tension and it escalates and it apexes right at the end of the session. I think a sprint race, more, more often than not, is not ever going to do that. Not Certainly not with the same regularity. Um, and I, I know that people don't necessarily get the variety that they want from this kind of qualifying i just don't think you're going to get that variety from a sprint race either so i just don't really i I think that that's something that the old quote-unquote old format has over the sprint format is that it's always going to build and the tension is going to be its highest at the end of q3 at the end of the session and it builds towards that so i think that's in its favor that's a mark in its favor that sprint racing just won't really ever be able to beat on a consistent basis yeah but most of qualifying is boring as fuck like most of qualifying is sitting around waiting for things to happen. And there is maybe, mm, I would say, out of the one hour of qualifying, there is about four minutes that you need to watch. And of course, like if you're an F1 fan and you like just seeing the cars on track is amazing, of course. But there is actually not a lot happening in Q1. Uh, and you could argue that there's like very, 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 very rarely does any do any of the top teams ever actually like miss out, and it's only ever because like there was a problem, like a serious problem. Um, yes, occasionally you get some crap drivers make it through to Q two. Oh my god! Like I don't, I actually don't think you need th- like one, two, and three. I think you should just have one and two. Like get rid of half the grid in the first one. Keep the grid. Yes, yeah, you could totally do that. Like that could be a half hour thing. 15 minutes to start, yeah. five-minute break, sure. 10 minutes for qualifying mm-hmm. to set the grid. You're done, mm-hmm. get out of there. But no, it's artificially increased. The whole tire thing is insane to me. Like, just well, let people pick. that's going to be improved like, next year a little yeah, bit, I think. Some of, the, weirdly, some of the dumb rules, the dumbest rules yeah, are going. Makes it incredibly difficult to understand. Um, and it's and people do weird things all qualifying too. So, like, you just have this weird balance of the top qualifiers in the first, in Q1 and Q2, trying to set times on tires they don't really want to use just because they have to 
because they have to make it through to the next one where they are obviously fast enough in every single circumstance. So most of qualifying, it's like watching a basketball game. That's why basketball isn't, isn't like the world sport that it should be. There's so much culture around basketball. It's because most basketball games, you can watch the last three minutes because that's the, the whole, the rest of it is just the tussle is trying to stay close to each other. And then the actual game is decided right at the end. And it, qualifying feels exactly like that. It's that like when the flag falls and everyone's got to finish that they're all coming across that line right at the end. It's that's the thing that that's the only thing that matters. Um, right. So it's a weird, it's a weird thing. Whereas the sprint race is exciting the whole time. Even if it is only I half an hour. 100% disagree. It was not exciting the whole time. Uh, the first 10 laps were exciting. And then I was looking at my phone. So okay, I, 10 I, laps of excitement is still 15 I, minutes of exciting versus the qualifying format as it currently is. That offers 15 minutes of excitement. I think one thing that the, old, the other qualifying you know, format preserves as well is qualifying is a Formula One car at its absolute peak delivering one flying lap as opposed to a stint or a race, right? So, I mean, it'd be a shame to lose that in some ways. I mean, if that's what people want, that's fine. We can always bring it back. But yeah, I just think that it'd be a shame if that went away entirely. to set the grid for the sprint race. Um, how? Because that you'll still have qualifying setting the grid for the sprint race. Well, I'm saying don't do that. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I uh, just, I don't worry about that. You could always like give a point for fastest lap on in the sprint race instead of giving one point to whoever qualifies on pole or whatever. But yeah, there's, there's, you know, different ways you could do things, but I don't know. I just don't know. I feel like here's where I feel like we're at. You can tell me if you agree or not. For me, sure. one thumb up for you two golden thumbs up. Yeah, but I would caveat that with, and, you know, I was tweeting to this effect. Uh, so people who follow me on Twitter would have already seen this. Yeah, which account do I have takes. to follow on you to get your Formula One opinions? Uh, you follow me on um, TikTok, and I dance okay. my opinions, actually, um, <laughs> using elaborate hand signals and meme music. Uh, I think that we should have different formats at different races throughout the year. I think it'd be fun to have this at five races. I think it's cool. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's difficult to follow. I don't think that, but, I, you know, don't make it like, oh, when we race at Australia, they all race backwards. Like, no, make it small tweaks that, that add a little bit of spice. You know, I'm not talking double points weekend either. That's not really what I mean. I mean, like, you can tweak the format a little bit because we do do that at races. Not every race is exactly the same. You know, some of them are much shorter. Some of them are much longer. Yeah, Not all the tracks are the same. Like we, there is already built in variants into formula one that we all accept and we all really love the sport for, but then change like this is like, that's not what F1 is. It's like, well, there are opportunities to tweak and test and make races yeah. exciting for different reasons. As long as it's still fair, I don't really have a problem yeah. with it. Um, what do you think about this? Hey, let me, I just had this idea, and I think it's actually not too bad. You know when there's hmm. tracks where there's two different layouts, like yeah. uh, Bahrain, for example? How about you can <laughs> you can pit whenever you want, but when you pit, you go from racing on the inside track <laughs> to the outside track. <laughs> And then you've got people who pit later. They're doing more laps on the inside track. Then you've got to merge. I just think this, is, this has got potential. Put some traffic lights in. Um, yeah. Give away yeah. signs. Yeah. Uh, you know, we could have you – know, you can Variance cut the corners, but, it's the mud, but you have to race over mud. So if you choose to put the mud tires on, you'll be slower on the asphalt. But on the mud, you'll be really fast. I was genuinely, I was serious about my idea. No, I know. I know. I was being silly, but um, no, I know what you mean. I think that there is, there are things you can do. I just think that the one, the one thing that joins all F1 fans up through all of this is we want to see the, we want to see the cars driving their maximum and the cars being driven by their drivers at the maximum more of the time. A hundred percent of the time is actually what we'd like to see. And right now it feels like we basically never see them driving at a hundred percent. And the sprint race yeah. offered that. Well, that's true. Let's talk about the race. There's a little, few things to get into. One particularly spicy thing we should get into. So let's let's leave the sprint race there. I'm sure we'll talk about the rest of the sprint races that happen. <laughs> but I think I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence and I think you've set yourself up for disappointment. So we'll see how that goes. Let's kick on, though, with a little bit of race chat. Let us race a bit. I gave him space. Sack my bones, mate. Let's hurry up and get out of here. We've got a race to do. Yeah. Zach, I wrote a quiz this week, so you have to do the 30-second recap. I've got my finger ready on the sound thing playing button, so I'm mm. going to make sound happen, which will aid you, but the rest of the job is yours to do. Okay. I can do that. 
Feeling good? Feeling limber? Yeah, I feel like I'm going to accidentally say a real hot take in here and not mean it because I'm going to be rushing. <laughs> That's kind of the idea, I think, is that you shortcut your brain a little bit and you just yep. the words just come out like, you know, stream of consciousness style. So just, go, just get in there and just, just kill it, brother. Ready? Okay. Yeah. It was really easy at the start. You know, we had this all this great racing between Hamilton and Verstappen. You're racing for the championship and oh my God. And then it was back and forth. And then Hamilton just touched Verstappen and he went off the track and everyone was like, punish the, the uh, punish the outcome, not the action. And then the FAA were like, Rah. and then everybody got on the radio to the FAA and we all heard that. That was really interesting. Hamilton got a penalty, maybe deserved, maybe not, and ended up fighting back for the win. Ten seconds. Meaning Charles Leclerc didn't quite get it. Uh, Norris had a slow pit stop, which meant that he couldn't fight for the podium. Five, you know, we all wanted to do the weird four, champagne thing on the thing. Three, Ferrari had a relatively two, okay race. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, good padding, and you finished right on the horn. Very well done. That was pretty good. I, was, I think that might be my best one. I was worried you were going to spend the entire 30 seconds just talking about the first <laughs> six corners or something. <laughs> That's what that I was always do. <sighs> so I reckon we'd need to just get straight to the meat this time yes. and talk about mm. the Hamilton Verstappen incident. Um, I, I, I was watching a replay of this. So I didn't get to enjoy it, you know, in real time. So I didn't get to engage with the online banter, but I could catch up on a lot of it later. But as I was watching it, uh, and then we had this red flag and we got lots of time to watch replays and mull over it and think about it and just, I don't know, like uh, <laughs> let your bias come to the surface and then counter your bias, all that cool stuff you got to do when you're a Formula <laughs> One fan. Um, I was prepared for this to be called a racing incident, but I would was not going to be surprised if it was a Hamilton penalty for a couple of reasons that we can get into and that was the way it went so Hamilton gets a penalty Verstappen though his car is twisted and bent into pieces he ends up in hospital no chance of winning from hospital buddy you've got to be on the track as they say that's famous that's a famous line that someone says so Hamilton charges to a victory a very hard fought well earned victory he goes home with all the points all the yummy points and Verstappen leaves with none the championship closes up so the big question is is Hamilton a dirty, dirty driver, or was it just a racing incident, Zach? I thought you were going to say, like, the big question is, is this a conspiracy by Formula One to artificially create a world championship that's interesting? Um, that's right. It's not that. That's not the question. Oh, no. my God. It was... <laughs> it's not a thing. Oh. I know it's very hot there, so I'll give you a pass. No, it's tricky. The whole thing's tricky, because I think it's a racing incident. Um, I think... In that it happened while they were racing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, look, this is... <laughs> <laughs> the cars are too big. Um, this is a classic yeah, one a, of those. Um, this the is problem. the problem. And the new car that they talked about, they showed pictures of this week, looks a little neater. But oh, yeah, we didn't I think talk that, about that. But no, um, that's fine. Anyway, It'll come up. Um, I think that Verstappen goes to shut the door on Hamilton. Hamilton has already kind of pulled out from the move. Not not pulled out, but is just like, okay, I don't, you know, it's not like Hamilton's driving on straight. He's taking the corner in a way that he can take it, but I don't think he was dangerous driving. I don't think he was driving dangerously or recklessly. I don't think Verstappen needed to... I, I find this, this constantly perplexes me, that drivers always seem to put themselves in this position when they're in front. They're like, well, I'm going to shut the door and you need to break and know that I'm shutting the door and anticipate it and and make sure that you're out of the way of me getting back on the racing line that I'm choosing. And then those same people, when they're following, they're like, you didn't give me space. Uh, so uh, Max Verstappen is the ultimate hypocrite for me in this circumstance because he races as hard as he wants, whenever he wants. Um, and when it doesn't go his way, he gets really annoyed. That being said, it does seem to go Hamilton's way all the time. I, I Again, another thing I tried, I, I can't really, like Hamilton doesn't really get DNFs. And maybe that's down to his driving style, whatever it is. Um, but he always seems to come off okay in these circumstances. It wasn't dangerous driving. It was a little bit of an accident. Yes, it was high speed. I don't think either car was in a really bad position or compromised position. I don't think that Hamilton needed to be right up against the wall on the grass I don't think Max should have shut the door like that. I could see why it was a penalty. But if we want close racing, this is kind of what it is. This is kind of the sport. So from a, if we're just talking about the actual incident, I can see why they gave a penalty. As they kept saying on the commentary, second least serious penalty wasn't enough to make Hamilton not win the race. 10 second penalty and when I won it. It's a great driver. It's a great team. It's a great team. So good job. So yeah, I think the sport kind of functioned in the way maybe it's meant to. What did you think? Hmm. Well, we disagree more than I thought. We'd I thought it was 
if anything, clear Hamilton penalty. If 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 it was racing, like I said, if it was racing, that's fine. If they if they called it a racing incident, I mean, it's in the first lap. This is when they usually like people want to see racing, especially on the first lap. Just let it go. I, I thought they would. I genuinely thought they were going to let it go. Um, I disagree that Verstappen could shut the door. I'm not sure where you're getting that from. Uh, Hamilton. I mean, I not to say that Hamilton again has to be on the grass, but he was nowhere even near the apex. So I think the argument that Hamilton might make of he didn't leave me space is ludicrous. The other thing I would add to that is that the replay showed that Verstappen, you know, opened up his steering and, and didn't nudge over as far as he could have or maybe would have. So I think those two things combined for me suggest that Verstappen did nothing wrong. He was, he was taking the corner to hit, you know, the, the, the hit the, the curb on the outside of the corner. For me, Hamilton got it a little bit wrong was driving more straight across, and he was hoping to end up at the same spot where Verstappen was aiming for, except he was going up the inside, which meant he had to be clearly in front and then in a position to not have to leave Verstappen any room. And don't I've heard some people say Hamilton was in front. You, you, I don't want some of what you're smoking because that just was not the truth. So, yeah, again, I, I would have been okay with them uh, calling it a racing incident on the basis that it was at the start of the the. the start of the, the race. But hmm. I think it's one for me it comes down to I didn't see anything that Verstappen did that was wrong. And I think Hamilton could have done a bit more, just got it a little bit wrong. Again, I don't think it's dangerous. I don't think it's egregious. I thought it was a good move. Ultimately it just didn't quite come off. You know, that's ignoring, you know, the outcome. Hmm. So well, I mean uh, do you then Well I have one thought on that then, which is that this is the okay. this is the problem with Formula One drivers is that they always expect the other driver to do what they would do. Um, I don't, I think you can see it in the way that, that Verstappen goes, goes right. And then opens up the steering wheel. Cause he's like, I don't think he even knew he was there. He might've, well, he's no, no, stop, stop, stop. He's it's a right hand corner. Yes. So yes, of course it is. Yeah, but you don't have to necessarily sweep in on that angle. I'm not saying that Verstappen did anything wrong. What's he, but what that do you mean different... sweep in? What's he, what's he meant to it's do? It's a hard move. Like into the, but, it's not a hard it, no it, it is because he's not he in his mind he is firmly clear this is what i meant by my point earlier any driver seemingly in formula one seems to think that they're in front so the car is the car that is next to them or very close to them is magically going to disappear so they can just drive wherever they like that is not the case. And these drivers keep making the same mistake. How many times have we seen guys like, I'm just going to take the racing line. You need to get out of my way. And then they crash and they're like, what the fuck was all that about? It's like, because you pretended like the other car didn't exist. So you made it somebody else's problem. And that's what no, Max Verstappen no, does in this Zach, circumstance. <laughs> Hamilton's car was next to his and there was a gap between Hamilton and the apex of the corner. So how can you say that? Because Hamilton Verstappen can't, did not because take Hamilton the line is, as if Hamilton wasn't yes, there. That I just know, didn't happen. I know. I'm not saying I'm so not. That's what you just no, said. There. I'm, what I'm not saying is that I'm not saying it's Verstappen's fault. What I'm saying is that Hamilton also is going as fast as he can, and we're asking Hamilton to break out of the move, and he probably should have. He probably should have got out of the way more, which is why they gave him the penalty, right? But it's a matter of inches, and so it gets a little bit wrong, which is why I don't think they gave him a huge penalty. He makes a small mistake. He doesn't make a huge mistake. He doesn't throw it up the inside like a fucking torpedo and go, "I'm taking you out." He yeah, gets yeah, it a little exactly. bit wrong. I, I, I think it was. I think it was a pretty small mistake. Yeah, and forgivable. Exactly. So that's why they gave him a but small penalty. Happened. But yeah, Max Verstappen says to himself, "I am taking this corner on my line, regardless of you." <laughs> so he endangers his own race. Well, he's got to make the corner. No, of course he can still <laughs> he make the corner. Not, he he's already he's already off. driving it wide already. But he goes, "I'm going to sweep inside and hit this apex, regardless of you." And I know. Well, that's what taking the corner is. I, yeah, I know. I, mean, that, I, I know, don't understand what you're no, saying. No, because I know but I'm saying that there is a problem here because all the drivers act like this. They're all like, well, I'm in front. So it's rightfully mine. But there is a difference between the theory of racing and what is actually happening in the moment. And I think all of the drivers who are in front are expecting the driver behind them in all circumstances to pull out of moves. And every week, every race, we have this same situation where we end up talking about this exact same thing, which is, well, the guy behind should have pulled out of the move, and he didn't, so then the guy in front crashed. So when are the drivers who are in front going to start taking a little bit more responsibility over their race and say, you know what, I won't pretend like the guy's going to pull out. Maybe I will 
not to take the corner in an exact way because I'm still going to come out in front. It's not like the guy's going to pull a move on me. I have the right to defend when I'm in front, of course. But why race recklessly enough to endanger your entire race? Because we saw it with Fernando Alonso and Daniel Ricciardo earlier, and Fernando Alonso and Vettel as well. Two guys giving each other space the whole time, not endangering each other's race. Good racing. But every single time fucking Max Verstappen or Lewis Hamilton are involved, they're both like, the other guy should have disappeared. Why didn't he pull out? So it's... It's not about the direct move. It's not about whether making the apex properly or not. It is the way that they are going about their racing. Well, I, we're spinning our wheels. We're not really getting anywhere. But anyway, um, so let's get through the rest of the race. Hamilton gets a penalty, serves the penalty, still recovers, still passes Norris, Portas, and Leclerc. He passed Norris, Norris, and Leclerc in that same corner just to just to fucking rub it into everybody else. <laughs> and then uh, claims the win. This happens in hospital. His first tweet is like, you know, I'm okay, thank goodness. That was a bit shit of Lewis to celebrate a win or whatever. And then uh, all this crazy racist shit kicks off online. Did you see any of this? This was nuts. Yeah, I mean, I make a point of not following racist people. Um, yes, I, that's true. And if you follow us and you're racist, just, uh, just don't follow us. us. Yeah, but well, don't worry. We've probably already tried to block you anyway. Um, it's appalling. Um, and oh, I, shocking stuff that was said. And I just can't. Uh, I, I really struggle with it because I don't think it's happening at the time, right? And I think that fandom is toxic in a lot of these circumstances, and it's so easy to come out and say things that are derogatory and horrible and, inhu- and you know, inhumane. Um, and the sport just doesn't need it. And there is a difference, but you know, I don't lay any blame in like Red Bull's hands. You know, they're allowed, they're allowed to say that I don't think Lewis should celebrate like that because I'm in hospital. I don't think Lewis knew. Um, and he's allowed to celebrate with his fans too. Uh, yeah, British yes. Home Grand Prix means a lot to him. Uh, of course it does because he's also... It, it wasn't like he like lined him up and T-boned into him either. Like it was not. It was a rate like, yeah. you know, it was an incident that happened, you know, it was, I don't know what you call it, like an innocent. It, he didn't have any malice, right? So, I mean, to suggest that he deliberately, you know, tried to kill him is just absolutely off the chain. Some people online have some wild, wild things going on in their heads. That's basically what it comes down to. Yeah. So anyway, uh, some statements have come out from the FAA and almost all the teams pretty much have just like jumped straight on and said, this is us too. We all, we all contributed to this and we all endorse it. Um, yeah. Racist uh, crap like this has no part of our sport. So look, let's hopefully the tension just disappears from this soon and I, don't, I think i don't know i would like to see max verstappen i haven't seen if he has or not but i'd like to see him come out and address it as well yeah um how do you feel about that what else how do you feel about, about red bull just about being what? like he endangered our lives it's like helmet marco saying that lewis should have like a race ban like a 10 well, race ban I mean, like, like did they not did they play that. any part in this at all like just insane rhetoric uh well i mean I don't know how I don't know where you draw the line then on that because you know like you say Christian Horner was straight on the radio saying this is really disappointing you don't put your foot in there you knew what he was doing suggesting kind of like you just you should have known not to do that so implying that he knew what he was doing um, so then it's a slippery slope once you start going down that down that road I, I mean Red Bull did as a team Red Bull did uh, support that we don't condone racism yeah. blah 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 so I think that for me takes the real sting out of it but obviously the rest of the stuff I think is unhinged and ignorable and yeah. Hamilton should be benched and Hamilton should go to jail and Hamilton <laughs> should be whipped. And it's like, what the hell? Just <laughs> knock it off. Just stop talking. So again, you know, listeners, if you want to do something nice for yourself, just ignore Red Bull for a while. Just ignore them because yeah. they're idiots. They are. <laughs> That's my opinion. There is a very, 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 like it has like cultish vibes to it, Red Bull sometimes. That there is that they this there is, is a, remember yeah. yeah remember when Red Bull were winning everything yeah. in the, like the you know the the, 20, the 2010 to 2013 and they would say crazy stuff like this all the yeah, time the world was, was against them when when yes and when the championship is on the line their worst side comes out and we're seeing it now yeah it's very yeah it's very odd they yeah compete on their own terms either be the underdogs and they can chip away at them and it's like everyone's yeah. on our side and then it's like no now we're all cheering for good racing all the time. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, and it's true. yeah. I think that there are there are also two very strong fan bases that have a, a very mm-hmm. big, like really big fan bases, and what that leads to is you get yeah. all types of fans and some horrible people too. Um, and we know this. We've we've crossed paths with 
fans of Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton uh, in the digital yeah, space true, who are absolute stands of those two drivers and we'll defend them to the hilt and we'll go to war for them. And for a sport that is, uh, as, as we were just saying, like a matter of inches and a matter of microseconds where people make decisions that uh, can have really big ramifications, um, it's kind of crazy to, in this over overanalyzed space to be like, oh, well, he made this micro movement, so he obviously tried to kill him. Like, that's, it's insanity. Um, I think yeah. it's really unfortunate for Lewis specifically. Um, and I think he was very emotional, and that's why he celebrated in the way he did, as he has every right to, um, at his home race especially. So, yeah, it was frustrating, and especially because it was a great fight back. You know, you take the penalty that you're given, I thought it, I, I love, to change track a little bit, I love that we're hearing the conversations between teams in the FIA. I just fucking love it. Oh, yeah. So, hang on. This is the thing I need to, to touch base with you. And I was just thinking to myself, man, I don't want this podcast to just be all about this no. one incident, but it's turning into that. Ah. Sorry. But I, Toto Wolf and Christian Horner, it turns out, both went to visit the FIA during the red flag. Mm. And I know that you're a fan of that, but I think that it's getting a bit out of control. I think it's happening too often. I don't, I just don't like it. I just don't, I don't think there's any reason for it. The thing I, the thing I would say is we see all the time during the race, so-and-so incident will be investigated after the race. And you go, why, why can't you just make a call for heaven's sake? Part of the reason is that the FIA extends to the teams the courtesy of saying, bring us whatever data you've got, come and make whatever case you want to make in person to us. We will listen and then we'll make our judgment. And, you know, that just is a courtesy that the FAA extends to the teams. I think the teams would do themselves a, a, a courtesy and adjust, you know, do themselves a kindness to just ease off a little bit on the sort of pressuring and bullying and standover tactics of going up and being thumping the desk and going, you can't penalize my guy because of this, this and that. And the other one going, you have to penalize him because of this, this and that. I just, I don't want our sport to turn into that. So, yeah, I would like to see that just... Just everybody just cool their heels a bit. Oh, yeah. And the joke is that turn into that, it already is that. Like, that's the closed system traveling circus that is Formula One, right? You know, Ross Braun, as, you know, the head of the FIA, what's his fucking job now? What's his president of Formula One? Some bullshit, <laughs> whatever it is specifically. You know, he was a team principal. Like, it's just all, for sure, at some point, guy. Toto Wolf will be CEO of Formula One, probably in his career. It wouldn't surprise me if he leaves Mercedes and then just becomes, you know, Liberty Media's guy who runs Formula One, um, you know, this is, it is just a, a group of people who they all have each other's personal phone numbers. You know, Toto Wolf was trying to email Michael Massey during the incident to be like, Hey, I've got data. I want to show you this graph uh, and this, these things. And Michael Massey's like, I don't look at my email during the race, mate. I, cr- I focus on the race. Also yeah. you're talking to the wrong guy. <laughs> I'm not the stewards. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not the, I'm one the one race that, director. You know, you know it's, Fine, petition me all you like, but just because we hang out in the gym doesn't mean I'm going to have a word to the stewards on your behalf. <laughs> like, fucking hell, man. Sweet games, but get off my back. So, and then the Christian Horner calls immediately. It's like, uh, by the way, most dangerous driver in the world. Do you see that? You seeing what I'm seeing? And Michael exactly. is like, yeah, I get it. It's under investigation. I, I, there's a race on. So, yeah. And I don't think that, you know, Lewis was trying to get Max out of the thing. Yes, they got to repair Lewis's car during the red flag. And yes, that didn't happen to Max Verstappen because his car was broken and he was in hospital. He's okay. It was a bad crash. It happens. This is why we watch the sport. Um, And it's unsurprising, I think, that the people who are not so wedded to their individual drivers uh, seem to have less of an emotional reaction to this kind of stuff than mm, the people who maybe. are absolutely watching the sport specifically for their one guy. Because it is a it is yeah. a rough sport if that's all you're watching it for, mate, because more often than not, something bad is gonna like something bad that you can't <laughs> that they can't control is gonna happen to them. The car will break, there'll be a wheel nut issue, you know, an a, a adios yuck nut scenario. There will be crashes. <laughs> it's just how it goes. You've got to move on. Like we're going to move on. Moving on. Do you want to talk about Charlotte Claire nice. almost winning? I was going to, well, I was going to say we could go there. Uh, well, let's, let's talk about Charlotte Claire. Do you think he was probably turning up to the race thinking, oh, I'm on for, I'm on for, for a second here. I'm on for P2. I think he was probably thinking, well, here's how it's probably going to go. Verstappen, Lewis, maybe Bottas. 
maybe me. I've probably got to worry about the McLarens <laughs> behind me. And all of a sudden, he's leading the race. Not only that, but he leads most of the race. Yeah. He led everything except for like three laps, I think. So, uh, probably not the race that Charles Leclerc thought he was going to have, but I'm sure he will take it quite happily. A much deserved podium, probably one of a f- only a few that he's going to get uh, this year, but um, good performance from Ferrari. Yeah, a good performance all round. You know, they had their shit together. My, probably my favorite part of the race was watching the onboard of Charles Leclerc as he's just like, well, there's that crash. There's those guys. I guess I'm winning now. Yes. And just drive past. Just, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, bad luck for them. Here we go. Um, so yep, yep. was there anything that Ferrari could have done to keep that win happening? Probably not. You know, they tried to race their own race. They oh, had their well, own issues. Could have been. It's one of those things where like... You, you could get really lucky and have a, have a safety car or like a red flag or something where you could just duck in the pit while you're in front. You always have that ad advantage of like, Oh, something unexpected happened. Someone crashed. Someone's in the wall. Bloody, uh, Lewis Hamilton hit someone off again on purpose. <laughs> deliberate. Blah, worst driver in the world. But now I can pit. And, uh, if, if he can neutralize, you know, him and Lewis, then, you know, he might have had a chance, especially if it was, you know, whatever towards the, the end of the race, maybe. But no, I think, um, you know, he'd be very, I think he'll consider himself pretty fortunate to have finished with a uh, a podium ahead of the McLarens, who also drove pretty well, has to be said. Uh, Lando drove really well. Ricardo too, putting in a pretty solid performance. He doesn't seem to be able to edge out his teammate uh, at the moment, but that's that's okay. That doesn't mean he's been driving badly. He's still holding off some pretty fast cars and some pretty talented drivers behind him. Yeah, and he had a better qualifying. Uh, he wasn't like the second off the pace that he has been seemingly every race while he's been in McLaren. Um so, yeah, I think yeah. he's finally unlocking some pace in that car, which is great. Um, settling in, all good. We want to see the McLarens do well and, and be looking yeah. forward. Same with Ferrari. We want those two teams looking up the grid as True. opposed to watching their backs for Pierre Gasly. <laughs> two, more, two more points that I want to make, and then we need to think of something as a finish off because I don't want to finish on these down notes. But uh, Sebastian Vettel, good to see him just having a completely normal one, having a big old spin while he was near Fernando Alonso. I didn't see them make contact it looked like Fatel was just whoopsie daisy spinning around like days of old but he made up for it by picking up trash after the race and getting everybody else to pick up the rubbish too wow. <laughs> <laughs> i wondered if he was picking up trash or just emptying bins because they were huge mm. bin, like big plastic bags full like almost as big as his own body two of them <laughs> and i wondered like i mean i know that the brits can go crazy they go hard right but really should they would they really have left that much trash on the ground and if so Crazy game. I I felt like it was probably a guy walking around who had emptied like 10 bins and he was struggling with the bags. And, and for the last 100 meters, Vettel was like, here you go. I'll help you carry those. That's what I, but I, I that was the impression yeah, I got. Apparently I he wrong. was talking to fans and getting them to clean up too. Maybe he was just yelling at people to put their shit wow. in the bins. So I don't know. Well, I mean, look, I'm willing to admit if I got that wrong, but if so, good on him. Yeah. Go out, get out there and yell at some people. Tell yeah. them to pick up the damn trash. It's just Uncle, Vis- anyway. Uncle Sebastian Vettel. He's become the uncle of the of the, uncle, of the Formula yeah. One paddock. So I like true. it. The other one, uh, Sebastian. Uh, the other one, yep. Sergio Perez. Mm. Um, spun, he was one of the, the casualties of the sprint qualifying in that he started the race from last, but he recovered into tenth for a single solitary point, and then, well, two things. One bit of for me a questionable moment where he overtakes Raikkonen and then, then slides across in front of him as he sometimes does he has form doing that <laughs> just shutting the and door think, finding I the apex going to get investigated just pretending like he's just invisible um so he was potentially on for a point but then gets sacrificed by Red Bull to say well look look <laughs> Hamilton's currently got the fastest lap look you could get 10th and if Hamilton gets the fastest lap well you know, we we all know who would who we would rather have the point. So you sacrifice your one point for tenth, mm. but it'll be one less point that both Mercedes and for our and uh, Hamilton get in the championship. So we would prefer that scenario, please, please organize that. So he is sacrificed, completely thrown under the bus for a late pit stop to take the fastest lap from Hamilton. Here's the thing about this: everyone's talking about this. Um, and people are going see the fastest lap. It creates intrigue. It creates a talking point. <laughs> This sucks. This is boring, <laughs> and I hate this shit. What do you think? Oh, after disagreeing so much this show, I feel exactly the same. Artificial bullshit well, that has no place, uh, that is doing the exact stupid. thing that it's not meant to be doing, which is that people only do this when exactly, they have, like... that's exactly right. It's And it's artificially there because 
the racing isn't close enough. So usually what happens is like, hey, you've got a 40-second gap to the person behind you. Why don't you have a pit stop and come out and do fast as that? That's your Bottas. And he's mm. like, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, can I do it nude? I don't know. Uh, yeah, and this is junk. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> It's going to be in the sauna, just like, you know, uh, ruining it. Like, I uh, could have been on for 10th, but instead yeah. of 17th. Maybe they should just let... I don't know why you have to finish in the top 10. If you're going to do it, like, let George Russell go and get it. He's coming 12th, you know? It means nothing to him, 12th yeah, or 15th. Why I don't let him so. accumulate some points? they got a really fast car um, when he's driving it on a Saturday. Why not? Like, what's this finish in the... Ugh. Give he's more points to the people who are in the front. That's what we need. Yeah. Ah. Uh, so we need give it to the needy. Let Yuki so Sonoda the, or Mazas Pin get out there and try and get fastest lap. <laughs> that would add some fucking intrigue. Exactly. Imagine in the last five laps, all the people who were coming fifteenth and lower were all like, "Well, we're all pitting because we're all going to have our little little qualifying session right now. We're all going to try and it's get a that one mini point sprint race, yeah, all by themselves. Yes, to get fastest lap. That's better. Yeah, that's the one improvement. I think it is better. That's my final thought. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good stuff. Too early. You peaked way too early. Yep. I've still got like half an hour of show oh, to God. do. So let's move on, actually, maybe. Maybe we get onto fantasy focus and I'll... Oh, you know what I did this week, either... right? Changed my whole team. What did you do? I put Max Verstappen <gasps> in my team. You didn't. Oh, <laughs> I've got a bone to pick with the fantasy <laughs> system. It says I've made eight changes to my team. Mate, I've made like one change. And you, you pay a penalty price if you make more than six changes. I'm like, dude, I have not made eight changes. That is just not true. You've been so, hacked. Lift your game. You've Just lift rub. Fantasy GP operators. Anyway, do you want to do the the race or the league? Um, I will do the league because I've got that up now. You'll do La Liga. Yep. I'll do Great Britain this race. So we'll count off the top three. Can't and spell in position great three this week great. is... T- <laughs> what? <laughs> That's nothing. Don't worry. It's just... Okay, good. <laughs> in position number three. Uh, rounding out the podium, Alpine back by manager Chris on the nice round number of 150 points. Equal on 150 points, but somehow ahead. Go work, out, go work that out. Who, who knows? Team number the two, Baggins is the better dog by Baggins the dog O'Donnell. And then a glorious victor this week is Two Seconds Ted by Glowing Rotors. That's uh, a great name. A, a magnificent performance. Uh, I'll find where we are. I'm sick. I've oh. given up on trying to hit my own... Even up and trying to hit my own little uh, thing Person. to show where I am because it doesn't work. Mm. Oh, two seconds. Scrolling, head. scrolling. What a Here's you. Great name. Forty-four for this race. Oh, uh, ahead of me, obviously. So pretty good. That's sort of you know Page midfieldish. Two. I'm, I'm not liking the fact that I haven't seen my name yet. Boy, I must have done really badly. Mm. I would say that uh, a lot of my drivers didn't do very well. Maybe I've missed myself a... completely. Why does this always happen? Don't worry about it. Hmm. I don't want to find myself. Yeah, no. Well, you don't do. tell me I'm on the front page. Can't be. Don't tell me. I, okay, fourth. No, I'm just out of the league. Apparently, I've left, left the league. Uh, so, uh, yeah. You've, you know, it's been fun, but I'm out. I'm just done. I'm just a, not in the league anymore. A Rodney exit. <laughs> a rogs it. <laughs> Jesus. We are, we are scraping the bottom of the barrel it's this week. It's hot today, man. And here I am. I'm two positions ahead of you, actually. I'm, oh. I'm two points and two positions ahead of you. I'm sorry. Just distracted by your name. Completely forgot to say my name. <sighs> Wow, way to, way to so, really yeah. make me twist the knife there. Like, can't find myself, can't find myself. Oh, here I am, above you. <laughs> Shit, can't. Um, <laughs> oh, here anyway. I am first. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hit us with the league. Results, league, a lot of hassle. Kilogram 955, currently in third. Uh, no movement at the top. Uh, High Rake, The Forest by Big Nick House, uh, number two. And Jochen and French Gasly by Flug. Uh, 15, 35 points. That's your marker, everyone. Catch up if you can. Yeah. Uh, Gauntlet Throne. I think I'm 69th, uh, I think, which is nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> We're 12 years old. Uh, I imagine you're two positions in front of me. Uh, something like that. Oh, three positions, four positions in front of me. And Flight yeah, Duck yeah, Racing. You like are 60, 50. Go on. You've moved close. up two. I moved up one. That's all you can hope for these yeah. days. Um, we need... Uh, that's it. We need some stakes between you and me. Stakes. Okay. Um, well, think about it. Think of, you don't have to commit now. Okay. Think about it. Yeah, sure. Do you want to do a super quiz? Yeah, right. We will and accept a couple of questions. Should one only win one? Would one want to have won that one in round one? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Zach, in honor of our sprint race this week, we're going to do a little short race quiz, a little, just a little short one. I did think about doing a quiz that was like one question or something real short, but I've, I've gone with how many have I got here? One, two, three, four, five, five questions hmm. in the short races quiz, Zach. Well, that's too many Strapped questions. In, should be three questions. Two laps. 
Mm. I'm ready. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Short, short race quiz. Mm. How long do you reckon the shortest F1 race was in minutes, 24 minutes, 43 minutes, or 53 minutes? Oh, God. 43 minutes? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. It was 24 wow. minutes, the 1991 Australian Grand Prix. I, I, I'll give you the exact time. 24 minutes, 34.899 minutes, although the, you know, 34.899 yeah. seconds, obviously, mm, obviously. Uh, plagued by heavy rain, eventually stopped and only half points were awarded. Uh, what year? Uh, that was actually, that was 91 oh. Australia, mm -hmm. Adelaide. Mm. Uh, that was within one minute of this sprint race. So huh. that was a full, you know, that was a whole, that was the whole thing. But we do a sprint race, and it's actually a minute longer than this race was. Pretty interesting, I reckon. Mm, that was interesting. I feel sorry for the people who were there. They got another, wet, and they saw a short race. <laughs> True. Another short F1 track, Zach, is mm. a single lap around Monaco. That's the shortest F1 track that we uh -huh. have. Uh, but the layout has been tweaked over the years. So I want you to tell me which year out of the following was Monaco at its shortest 1929, 1979, or 2009? Hmm. At its shortest, um, 79. You're correct. Yes. You would also have been correct oh. if you had said 1929, because between oh, 1929 it? and 1979, that was when the track was at its shortest, and it got longer after that, and I oh. guess it's it remains longer. So hmm. good for it. It's a growing boy. Yeah. Question number the three, Zach, our favorite driver, Nikita Mazepin, claims which unenviable record at his debut race this year? Oh, what unenviable record? The shortest career. Uh, no. Um, sh shortest something. Shortest race. It was like he, he was out in the, the first 12 seconds or something. Shortest race on what? On debut. On debut for at least at least for the previous nineteen years, uh, he retired on turn two. Hmm. The shortest race for a debut driver in the previous nineteen years. So well done, Nikita. God, he sucks. Doing us proud. Still sucks. God, he <laughs> still sucks. Yeah, he's, he's still, he's just still no really crap. Question number the four: Sebastian Vettel made his debut in two thousand and six, but he copped a penalty within the first six seconds of his first race, making it the shortest time within an F one career before incurring a penalty. What was that penalty for? Hmm. Did he uh, get off the line too fast? He skipped the start. He was like, you know what? I go on the second light. <laughs> you know what? He didn't. But I think he jumped the start this race. Did you see that? No. I was I watching the replay that. and I think oh. he jumped it and no one mentioned anything. No, obviously he got huh. away with it or no one mentioned it. But I think he, everyone go back and watch. I think he jumped the, the start at this race. Huh. No, it wasn't for that. He actually sped in the pit lane. He started from the pit uh. lane, just sped straight out. So in the first seven seconds, six seconds of his career, he got a penalty. That was 2006 Turkish Grand Prix. If you love to see Vettel lighting it up in the pit lane, you can go watch that. Yep. Um, I told you it was a short little quiz. There's only one left. You ready? Yep. We've got a couple of Tolos on the F1 grid this year. So you can think about Ocon, you think about Russell. Mm. But there's a few contenders for the shortest driver on the grid this year, Zach. I want you to tell me who you think it is. Oh, Yuki Sonoda looks small, uh, but so does Sergio Perez. Um, hmm. Who do I think is the littlest? The littlest little guy. Um, <laughs> Lando Norris? Just a wee little guy. Lando? So I, <clears throat> I can tell you this. Lando Norris last year was the shortest driver on the grid at 170 centimeters. But this year, sneaking in underneath him, absolutely no problem standing next to him underneath his umbrella if it was raining. <laughs> Yuki Sonoda at only 159 centimetres. Oh. He is the masser of this year's grid. I should Just have. Just a wee little masser of a guy. Oh, I should have trusted my you instincts. Were right there. Because that's what it was. Were right I was like, there. he's a small guy, but maybe that's just me. Like, maybe he's just been standing next to tall commentators or interviewers. That You're kind like, of thing. he's small in stature, like small in, small in expression mm. and character. Mm. And that, you know. You, you don't. We've got to overcompensate for that. But no, you should have just followed through. Yogi Sonoda. Yeah, this is the flavor versus taste thing again, isn't it? It's the it whole really thing. Really is. Oh, that what was pretty show. Like? I don't nope. think it was. <laughs> oh, no, you've ruined it. It's all out the window now. Well, anyway, it's time for a final thought. Zach, any final thoughts about flavor and taste? Yeah, um, I tweeted this out, uh, but this was my major concern with the sprint race: is that it's not quite short enough for one beer, but it's not quite long enough for two beers. 
Um, <laughs> so that's where I can get behind you. And, and so, you know, people will say, well, adjust the size of the beer you're having. You could have a 330 mil beer yeah. or a, a half have liter. Have a Heineken Zero. Have zero beers. Exactly. Well, yeah, does that still count as a beer? I suppose it does. Yeah. You could drive. I don't know. Yeah. You can drive. Um, so, yeah, I think <laughs> sprint race should either be slightly longer or slightly shorter um, around mm. my beer preferences. Um yeah, right on. And I don't think you should, like, just two beers. This is the problem as well with watching Formula One in the middle of the day. You have a couple of cold, and might, beers might not be your alcohol of choice. You know, you enjoy a snack and uh, uh, maybe having a peach daiquiri, a peach and lime daiquiri, which was my, peach and lime daiquiri was my MySpace name uh, a long time ago. Um, <laughs> at some point. Um, Panic at the Disco song, I want to say that was taken from. Anyway. The whole point is that you have a couple of beers in the middle of the day watching the Grand Prix, and then you're like, what now? It's three o'clock or four o'clock. There's a lot <laughs> yeah, of day left. Now? Like, do I need more or less or stop or whatever? So maybe the sprint race should be shorter, like you said, so that I can just have one fun little drink and then go about my day. There you go. See? That's the way. And yep. then they just do a one lap shoot off, and you're like, you have to do shots or something. <laughs> Pretty good. Hey, Zach, I've got a final thought too, and then we'll wrap this baby up because it's getting long in the tooth, my friend. So uh, I think there was a new sub, new new person pledging on the Patreon this week, which is really good to see. You love to see it. Um, again, I mean, the Patreon just ticks along and it, it pays the bills, keeps us from living underneath the uh, the overpass. And, you know, we just we pre- appreciate it so much. And, we, and when we started that, we put in so much effort to be like, we're going to send you a newsletter. We're going to make you videos. We're going to record extra podcasts. I'd love to do some stuff like that again at some point but right now it's just we're focused on putting out as much as we can for everybody because it's just such a tough just such a tough bloody time of year but boy i'm grateful for people who are still listening still supporting the patreon and new people who are joining the patreon so thank you so much uh this week's show dedicated to all of you all my homies um just appreciate you that's my final thought yep love that i'm with you Thank you so much for all of you for supporting the show. Um, without you, we wouldn't be doing this. Um, yeah. Keeping the lights on. Uh, more than the lights. Uh, a boom mic stand so that I can not have a really <laughs> janky back after recording this episode. Yes. Um, it's exactly. super useful. Uh, especially because we've been uh, recording in our... We don't have home studios unless you've done something to your place. Um, we are... Oh, yeah, I meant to tell you a bit of a home studio. Fuck yeah. me. Amazing. <laughs> You do one other podcast and now you're like, I'm just going to fully set myself up. Um, That's it. Uh, anyway. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully you've been enjoying all the, the amount of content we've been putting out because uh, I sure do like recording it. Um, so it's yeah. nice to have it out <laughs> yeah. in the world. Exactly. Mm. So we'll be back after the next race. Not next week, but the one after that for a race. And then we'll be back into the old race and dare to swear uh, – not alternating, but I guess there's no gaps, is what I'm trying to say. Hashtag so no we gaps. did nearly 20 episodes in a row. We'll do probably another 20 episodes in a row to round out the year, but give us this one week. Will you please yeah. have a little break? We'll be back to oh. no gaps, like Hamilton trying exactly. to overtake Verstappen. No Straight gaps. into no gaps. That's it. <laughs> if, you, if you don't go for no gaps, you're not a no racer. I think that's how it goes. That's it. Zach, have yourself a great trip. See Cheers. you when you get back. Love to see some, some pickies, some oh, snaps, some, you know some holiday snaps. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll talk about the next race. All right. That sounds good. I'm excited. You take it easy. Everyone else take it easy. And until next time, when you're not taking it easy, my name's been Rod. <laughs> when I'm back at Hard to Work, my name's been Zach. That's it. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, yeah.